Hi, my name is Jonathan Pillings, and we're going to be talking about OpenAFS today using Vagrant and Ansible. Okay, first we're going to check out the Git repository. So we can see here there are uh, a variety of files in here, and they're used to uh, create the OpenAFS cell using Vagrant. It's really easy to get it set up once you've got Vagrant installed and Ansible installed. All you have to do is run Vagrant up and it will uh, download the CentOS 7 uh, virtual machines that are used to uh, base the VMs that are going to run the OpenAFS cell and once they're up and running, and you can see here, I'm using the VMware provider. Um, once those are up, uh, it will start running Ansible against all those hosts. Um, it's a fairly long process, so I'm going to skip ahead. Okay, you can see that the Ansible run has completed and so provisioning is finished. So you can see if I run Vagrant, status that there are four servers that are running. Let the, let that run for a little bit. Yep, four servers. Uh, and one of them is actually AFS client. So let's connect to that one because that's the one that we will use to actually interact with the uh, AFS mount point. So we go vagrant SSH AFS client. And there we are. Now let's see. Yep, there is a slash AFS mount point right here, right there. So we have AFS on this system. Let's see what we can do with it. So if I look into slash AFS directory, you can see that the test.example.com, which is the default cell in the Vagrant file, uh, that's already been set up. And well, how does that work? Let's look in there. Oh, there's a test directory in there. So one of the things that the provisioning script does is it sets up the a volume called test. So if I go, this is an AFS command, FS ls mount, it'll tell you that that directory is a mount point for the volume test. Now that hashtag test means that it is a read-only one. So if I were to do something like touch, AFS test.examples.com test. Oh, it's read only. And that's expected because it is read only. Now, why is why would you have a read only volume in there? Well, so we know that it's the volumes called test. So let's use another AFS command. VOS examine. The VOS command is something that you use to interact with uh, AFS volumes. And so in this case, we're going to examine the test volume. And you can see, oh, there's a lot of information here. The important thing that I want to point out right now is that there are four sites for this volume. One of them is the read-write site, and the rest of them are read-only. And there is a read-only copy on all three servers, AFS server one, two, and three. Now, how do you write to these AFS volumes if they are if it's read only? What if you want to save files there? Well, there's another thing you, you can do with AFS paths. Now in the earlier I tried to touch there, but if I go and I put a dot in front of there, it works. Now why is it that I'm able to write there and not to the other one? Well, if you put the dot in front of the AFS cell name, that lets you go directly to the read write volume. And I am able to write to that volume. Well, what happened to that other volume? Let's take a look at the original one. No, it's not there. Well, the reason why it's not there is because it's only on the read-write volume and it hasn't been replicated over to the read-only volumes. Now there's a command to do that. It's called VOS release test. That's the volume name. And it released volume successfully. So let's take a look. There it is. The file is there now. 
So why is it that, that it works that way? Well, with AFS, you often want to have um, files available in the most uh, redundant manner. And if you have it replicated to three servers in this case, that means if one of those servers were to go down, uh, clients will automatically fail over to one of the other volume servers. And that means that if you're just reading files out of AFS, you'll still be able to read it even if one of the servers is down. Now you won't be able to write in the, into it if one of the if the one site that has the read write volume is down, but you'll still be able to read out of it. You also won't be able to uh, release the volume if one of the sites is down. Okay, so we've created our AFS cell and we've run a couple AFS commands and we're starting to get a better understanding of how AFS works. So that's all for today. And in the next video, we're going to do, we're going to investigate a little bit more about how these commands work and some other things that you can do with your AFS cell.